What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the Pursuits and Projects channel. Today I'll be sharing the proposal development process. I know that this was a topic that came up after my last video where I talked about a day in the life of a proposal writer and I did get a comment um, asking to see a, what the process looks like and what that entails. So let's get started. Before we get started, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and you know, subscribe to the channel because we'll be making a lot more videos that are career focused, whether that's on project management, proposal writing, proposal management, and just anything related to career growth. Um, that's what you'll find here on the Pursuits and Projects community and YouTube channels. So be sure to hit subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss another video again. There are a lot of things that we want in life, whether that's interviewing for a dream job or, you know, persuading your friend that you want to reschedule based on your own personal reasons or even securing a client deal for your new business. All of these things require not only solid communication skills, but it also doesn't happen just by a stroke of luck. It happens because you went out there to persuade or convince someone to do something that works out for the both of you. In today's video, I'll be talking about the proposal development process in the form of writing sales proposals. In this video, I'll cover, you know, what the proposal development process is about and as well as the ingredients that make up the successful planning and execution of a proposal. I also found a really good quote by an author that really helps explain and simplify what a sales proposal is all about. So according to Philip C. Collin, author of Successful Writing at Work, the purpose of a proposal is to sell your company's brand, its products, or its services at a set fee. This process often includes the goals and methods to develop work for a client. And really, no matter how long your proposal is, it is a fantastic marketing tool to help entice new buyers. So what exactly is a proposal development process? Well, it's a process that helps organizations respond to clients' requests for proposals. Organizations that have a well-defined proposal development process positions them to developing a much better proposal that satisfy all of the buyer's needs as well as their project requirements. If you think about it, having any type of system or process is better than not having one. Let's say you are editing your video files, for example. If this is going to be an ongoing process and you want to be able to create the most high quality videos possible without, um, without losing out on different clips and things like that, you need to have some sort of system in place, whether that's file management, um, clip management, and just ensuring that everything is in the folder that it's meant to be in. And before we jump right into the next step, we need to know what exactly is a request for proposal. So the definition of an RFP is a document that solicits a proposal often made through a bidding process by an agency or company interested in procurement of a commodity, service, or valuable asset to potential suppliers to submit business proposals. See, that is quite a bit of a handful, but what you really need to understand is that the proposal development process is a part of the procurement knowledge area in project management uh, methodologies. And, you know, even when I was studying for the project management certificate, this section in particular came up and it was very easy for me to understand. And I learned all the concepts fairly quickly just because I have a very good hand and understanding of the proposal development process. I will say the this process can be very long and tedious if you're responding to a very large and complex RFP or a very complex project with a lot of risk. But at the same time, this process can very much be tailored down based on a smaller project that is less risky, less complicated. And so you need to understand that this process can very much be tailored to your needs. So the proposal development process can be divided into four categories, actually four color team reviews, which I'll be discussing in detail in later sections of this video. The four color team reviews are kickoff, pink review, red review, and gold review. And yes, I understand that kickoff is not a color, but I'll get into what it's all about later on in this video. 
So in a nutshell, think of the proposal development process as its own content development methodology. The better and clearer your system is, and the more team members are able to understand expectations, the higher chance that you can actually create a high quality, compelling and winning document that can help your business secure new clients. So let's get to hosting a killer kickoff. Really, a successful kickoff sets the stage for a successful project. It's as simple as that. And preparing for a killer, killer kickoff really comes in two folds. First, planning for it, and the second being hosting it. Let's see what that looks like. During the planning phases of a successful kickoff meeting, a proposal writer must gain a full understanding and picture of the project requirements and conduct a full RFP analysis before they plan for things like win strategies, logistics, writing, and even hosting color team reviews. Logistics planning makes it much easier for the proposal team to focus on its assigned task to put together a compliant, compelling, and winning proposal. When planning, it's important to ask questions like, when should we have the kickoff meeting? Who should run the meeting? Who should attend a kickoff meeting and who doesn't? When scheduling the kickoff, be sure to share reference links to where the team can review the RFP, the scope, and even terms of reference in advance of the meeting so that they can come prepared with issues and even our value proposition. A good practice when scheduling is to post a meeting agenda to the kickoff meeting, sharing meeting objectives and things that the team members should be aware of in advance of the, the meeting. Another item to prepare for is a proposal outline or a container as I call it. This is the product of your careful review of the RFP, its associated documents, including any addenda, all of its requirements, and an understanding of the client and your organization's value proposition. This step really is based on your experience level as a proposal writer, proposal coordinator, proposal lead, whatever you like to call it, and how many analogous submissions are available within your organization or agency to use as a starting point. When hosting your meeting, it's important to reiterate the meeting objectives to stay on track from the get-go. Often, meetings can turn into conversations or it's very easy to get sidetracked to other projects that the team is also working on. It is your job as the proposal manager or the proposal writer to not let this happen. You want to be able to set the stage. At the kickoff, introduce the team members and share your background knowledge of the project as well as the client. Here, this is where the project manager and the subject matter experts will be able to share critical business and technical information that you, the proposal writer, can turn into a compelling narrative. Ask meaningful questions and don't be afraid to ask a question if you're unsure of the topic. At a kickoff meeting, there is no stupid question, especially if it's in an area where you have zero knowledge of, like coding or sewer design. By planning for your kickoff and taking the necessary steps during the meeting using the items above, you should be well on your way to a killer kickoff in no time. Another critical aspect of hosting a successful kickoff is establishing a high performing team from the get go. In order for this to happen, there has to be some sort of trust, camaraderie and goals established. Everyone on the team needs to understand that they're working towards the same goal to develop a winning proposal and to win the job and understand expectations and contributions. A really good kickoff meeting usually has everyone in attendance engaged in discussions and those who come prepared with issues, benefits, win strategies, and things like that. Everyone in the meeting needs to understand that they have to carry their own weight to push the proposal development process forward. And that is why it's so important to be able to assign a content champion or someone responsible for every section of the document at the kickoff. Checking in with a pink team review. At the pink team review, this is really a preliminary stage of your proposal development process. It's where your team gets together and looks over at the draft content that has been developed during that time between kickoff and pink. This is where team members are, you know, assigned section to be responsible for, and you could really call them content champions. And this meeting is to really look at that and ensure that everybody understands their expectations moving forward into red team. So following up with a red team review, 
Now I understand the red team review and the pink team review does sound very similar and it, the color scheme is very similar as well but you want to understand that this is another check-in on the status of your proposal but the expectation here is that there should be a minimum of draft content completed in every section of the document and to ensure that there is compliance to the RFP and that we are writing uh, and meeting all of the buyer's needs. So during this red team review meeting, it's a very good practice to have someone on your team who understands or knows the client very well so that we can get an idea of what the client is looking for and we're able to review that document critically from the client's lens and this is usually a very good time to do so because there is draft content but there is still room for improvement and changes and nothing is too finalized at this stage so it's a very good time to make any major changes finally the goal team review we finally made it guys this is the final review and this is really where you want to have your pen down and you want to all read the document from beginning to end to make sure that it is a winning document because after all but the proposal development process is to help your company win new business so another good practice during this meeting is to discuss logistics and production because after all, you might have to print and deliver the proposal or it might be as easy as emailing to a client or submitting through an online portal. Whatever that may be, it's always, always a good practice to finish the entire proposal and all its appendices a day before submission because that gives you time to figure out if there's any problems and troubleshoot them. So that's really what the point of the gold team review is it is a final review and production planning that's it guys that sums up my video today on explaining the proposal development process so as you guys know the proposal development process is key for organizations who respond to rfps quite frequently um, it is a really good process and a good system to set up and implement for all your proposals and Clearly, there is a lot of little itty bitty ingredients that make up the successful planning and execution of a proposal. So if you guys like today's video and you feel like you've learned something new about the proposal world, then please do give this video a thumbs up because I would so appreciate any feedback at all. And if you guys haven't already, keep up with my videos because I have so many more video ideas that I want to get going with in the next few months. So do subscribe to my channel and be sure to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any videos that are coming up. Bye guys.